I wanted to say thanks to everyone who watched the last few videos that I've posted and, and to anyone who watches any of my videos. I wanted to come back and do a quick little follow-up today on the Amber Spradlin story. This was posted um, yesterday, September the 12th. Attorney General, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron denied Floyd County Judge Executive Robbie Williams' request for a special prosecutor in the Amber Spradlin murder case. In a letter to Williams, dated Tuesday, September the 12th, Daniel Cameron thanked Williams for his request, but ultimately denied it based on Kentucky statutes. Um, this is from the Floyd County Chronicle. Staff writer Rachel Hill. We appreciate your concerns for the impartial administration of justice in this case, stated Cameron's letter. The authority of the Office of the Attorney General to assume jurisdiction of a case or to appoint a special prosecutor is limited, and it goes on to talk about some Kentucky laws and a, Kent a, a county judge executive is not one of those officials specified in the statute as someone with authority to request the appointment of a special prosecutor in a matter. The circumstances do not at present appear to call for a special prosecutor. Therefore, the office respectfully de declines your request. So see, Robbie Williams being the executive judge, meaning that he deals entirely with the fiscal court, meaning just the money system of the, of the county, how money is spent, how it's allotted to different offices, um, and special projects and stuff in, within the county. He has nothing whatsoever to do with the criminal cases that come through the courts. The phone call, the 911 call made the night of this murder, or the morning of this murder, had someone dispatched a police officer out to the home that morning. It's possible that Amber Spradlin would still be alive, or at least police would have been on the scene at the time that this was taking place, while the people who were there who took part in this were still within the hall. This is just my guess. And Robbie Williams played a role in taking 911 to the Prestonsburg City Police. So, there was Floyd County Commonwealth Attorney Brent Turner said he had no doubt that the request would be denied. There was never any question that this request would be denied because Robbie Williams has no more authority to request a special prosecutor than the dog catcher would. Additionally, said Turner, my office has no conflict and the family is adamant that they want my office to continue on this case. The county judge needs to worry about doing his own job. If we need a load of gravel or if the toilets get stopped up at the Senior Citizen Center, we'll call on him. But when it comes to murder cases, he needs to leave that to the investigators and the prosecutors. So see, like I was saying, Robbie Williams' role as county judge executive, and I don't even know why they use the term judge. I think that, sh I think that should be changed. Because while he is elected as kind of like the top official of the physical court, they have magistrates, they have voting to decide how money is spent and um, so he has nothing to do with being a judge he doesn't see it in a in a black robe in a courtroom and decide cases so I think the term judge should be removed from that that's just my opinion on September the 8th, Williams and Turner squared off in letters of their own. Williams requested a special prosecutor be brought in, and Turner responded by writing that the family was against that. 
On September 11th, Mark Wolander, attorney for the Amber Spradlin's family, sent a letter to Daniel Cameron requesting the denial of the request of Robbie Williams on behalf of the family. And, of course, we now know that uh, Daniel Cameron did turn that down. He pointed out to Robbie Williams that he had no authority to do that. That would just be like any citizen uh, writing a letter to the Attorney General asking them to, uh, you know, remove someone from a case. He has no more authority than any one of you listening or myself. And in another note that I'll make real quick before I move on, um, the Floyd County Grand Jury meets today. I don't know if the family has been informed of what's on that docket. I know they usually post that publicly. All this back and forth between Robbie Williams and Brent Turner and, and Keith Bartley and uh, it leads me to believe that there's something on the agenda concerning Amber Spradlin, and hopefully they have reached a conclusion. I don't know if the DNA is back on the on the murder scene, the crime scene. I know that at the very beginning of this, they said that there was blood mixed in with Amber's blood that was someone else's. Now, the autopsy report came back, but I don't know if they have, if, if the DNA has come back. But whoever it was, I hope that they have finally zeroed in on somebody and are getting ready to make an arrest and an announcement. Because, you know, in, in uh, Pike County now, there was an arrest made after two years. of an attorney. The reason I'm bringing this up, it has nothing to do with the Amber Spradlin case, but it shows that it took two years for them to decide that this man had murdered his wife and arrested him and charged him. His name was Kyle Deskins. A Pike County grand jury handed down an indictment charging former assistant Pike County attorney Donald Kyle Deskins with the murder of his wife. The indictment filed in Pike Circuit Court claims Deskins, who was the city attorney for Elkhorn City, murdered his wife, Judith Don Deskins, on April the 24th, 2021, causing blunt force trauma with the intent to cause her death um, according to the Pike County Grand Jury, Deskins engaged in conduct which created a grave risk to another and thereby caused the death of his wife. The indictment also includes two charges of tampering with evidence. A grand jury found that Deskins destroyed, mutilated, concealed, removed, and altered physical evidence. I hope that those charges will also apply to some of the people who were in the home of uh, Dr. Michael McKinney that morning, if that was the case. And if I'm not mistaken, in some of the stuff that I've read on the Justice for Amber Facebook page, it was said that it looked like a cleanup had been attempted or a cover-up of some, not really a cover-up, but a clean-up or maybe even some time had passed. They had enough time to pass to kind of move some stuff around and fix stuff the way they wanted it to look, I guess. Now, I don't know the details here, and this is kind of morbid, but I don't think that they were able to remove the murder weapon because it was reported that the knife had broken off inside of Amber Spradlin's head. So I'm assuming that it was still lodged inside of her head when they took her body to Frankfurt. So back to this Deskins. 
um, he was booked in the Pike County Detention Center without bond. The case will be handled outside of Pike County with Commonwealth Attorney Floyd Anthony Skeens serving as a special prosecutor in Paintsville, Kentucky. If convicted, Deskins faces 20 years to life on the murder charge and one to five years for each of the tampering charges. So the reason that I bring that up is just to show that it took two years for them to indict this man, and I hope and pray for the sake of Amber Spradlin's family and the community that it doesn't take that long for them to finally conclude who murdered this girl and get some justice started for her. So I wanted to talk a little bit now about another case that's ongoing, and I've been trying to research and find some information to share. This is going on in Lee County, Virginia. Last night it was announced that due to a shelter-in-place um, asking people to stay in their homes and keep their doors locked and be on the lookout for this man, that they were closing the schools today. They didn't want to be running the school buses and have the children out while this is going on. And here's what I can say about this. I, I've searched and searched trying to find the information on the, the story, the background of this. But um, this was dated uh, today, September 13th, 2023. Honorable Gary Parsons, Sheriff of Lee County, Virginia. The Lee County Sheriff's Office continues to aid the Anderson County, Tennessee Sheriff's Office, Claiborne County, and the U.S. Marshals in attempting to locate and apprehend fugitive Jason Dockery. Dockery is a suspect in Anderson County, Tennessee for homicide and wanted for violations of pro probation for aggravated assault. A pursuit which began in Claiborne County, Tennessee ended in Ewing, Virginia at which time the alleged suspect ran into the woods. This occurred around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A unified command has been established um, so it goes on to tell who else involved in this, the Virginia State Police, Tennessee, uh, Blount County, Tennessee Sheriff's Office, and K-9 teams, um, just the Park Service, the National Park Service, and the Virginia Park Service. At present, there is no factual basis to believe the fugitive has left the area of Ewing, Virginia. And the, the um, citizens, they are asking the citizens to stay vigilant keep their doors locked, and their vehicles secured. The U.S. Marshal Service is offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to the apprehension of the fugitive. The, the subject is considered to be armed and extremely dangerous. For any tips or sightings, you may contact... Um, the Lee County Sheriff's Office at 276-346-7777. You can always call 911. So this is, this is a little bit of the story. It doesn't give a lot of detail. It just says, Anderson County Sheriff's Officers continue to investigate a deadly shooting. The shooting happened in the 200 block of Moore's Gap Road, in Claiborne County, Tennessee. The suspect's car was spotted and a pursuit, but they ultimately lost visual of him. I'm, I'm guessing that he abandoned his car somewhere in Lee County, Virginia, and this is why they believe he fled into the woods. This is a very wooded, very forested area, Lee County, Virginia. Um, here are a bunch of other stories. I'll, I'll click on a few of them to try to find more details. What, who was he supposed to have murdered and why? Was there, was it just a road rage thing or was it someone in this man's family? I don't know. 
This was from yesterday. Authorities have identified the fatal shooting suspect at the center of an ongoing manhunt. Authorities are searching for Jason Dockery, who is a suspect in an Anderson County, Tennessee homicide. According to law enforcement, a pursuit began in Claiborne County, Tennessee and ended in Ewing, Virginia around 3 p.m. So that's pretty much the same story that they had earlier. Um, I just have a picture of him here. Say that he is five foot six and is considered armed and very dangerous. Anything about the actual assault, the murder. Maybe more will come out later. If it does, and if this man is captured, I will do an update on that. So those were just a couple of updates I wanted to do. And before I end this video, I wanted to read a little um, story that I came across this morning. I really felt like there had to be more to the JoJo Brown missing person case from Iceland. So I typed her name in and I was looking for something about her. Because I just wanted to, you know, I just felt like there had to be more details in her case. Was she involved with anyone? Was she in a relationship with someone? Is it possible that her family may be suspected a boyfriend or an ex-husband or something like that? It was reported that there was a possible sighting of her at an apartment complex or maybe in the parking lot a month after she went missing. I don't know if the police went there and knocked on doors or, you know, if it was just someone maybe who looked like her. This whole thing about her having an active warrant for her, it's possible that she might have been afraid she was going to get picked up walking along the roadway on her way to this convenience store. So maybe she took a different route back home afraid she was going to get picked up. Or maybe she ran into someone at the store who maybe offered her a ride and something happened to her that way. I don't know, but I just wanted to read this. This is from WSAZ. This was in 2019. So this was the 10-year anniversary of her disappearance. And I tried to find something more updated. I'm going to continue to look into this because there's just a couple of these stories sometimes that clicks and you really want to find out more about this. There has to be something more. I would love to know what the warrant was that she was wanted on, uh, what the charges were. Because maybe in her mind at that time, she really just did not want to get picked up and go to jail. Even if it was some, I don't know if it was a felony warrant or if it was a misdemeanor of some kind. Um, but it's possible that she ran into someone at that store or maybe she turned around and walked right back home and someone followed her home. I don't know. So this is the story that I found this morning from WSAZ. It has been 10 long and heart-wrenching years for Harley Brown. Her daughter, Janet Jolene Stevens, known as JoJo, disappeared from Ashland in October of 2009. Since then, the case has gone cold. I want answers, her mother said. Investigators say she was last seen in the area of an old Junior's Food Mart on 29th Street in Ashland. She did not have ties to anyone outside the local area. All of her personal belongings were left at her home, and there's no indication that she intentionally left. I never thought it would be this way. I pray every day. I ask God to watch over her and keep her safe. I pray she is warm and fed. Brown says her daughter left their home, so I'm guessing that she lived at home with her mom because I was also wondering who was it that told the police that she said she was going for cigarettes and a pop. So apparently her mother lived with her. Maybe other people in the home as well. The family has held vigils over the last 10 years. There have been search parties and flyers have been passed out to keep her story alive. We help the missing, a non 
nonprofit group has worked with her family to try to spread the word. Um, Kentucky State Police say if you have any information to contact the Ashland Post at 606-928-6421. And I will continue to look into this to try to see if I can find anything else out. Uh, Ashland, Kentucky is located in the, in the east northeastern part of the state. It is close to Huntington, West Virginia, and just across the river from Ohio, just across the Ohio River. I appreciate everyone for taking the time to watch my videos, and thanks a lot.